And some bonus money for Mike Morgan. $50 in bonus money for Mike Morgan. For those of you who've been watching the show for many years, you know that the Morgans, when they get, when whatever the winnings are on this program, they split it right down the middle. And there's Gary Cormier. The two, four, five, and eight. So not only do they split the money with each other, they each have wives. And there's a sound. spare for Gary Cormier. Well done, nicely done. Gary moves over to lane 33. He will not be deterred by the Mike Morgan splurge of marks. Four in the last five. Eight in the spare and has another opportunity here. Very makeable spare, the four and the seven. He's got it. Couple of marks in a row for Gary Cormier. Matching Mike Morgan. Almost mark for mark. Six marks in the string for Morgan, five in the string for Cormier. And Tight a, match. Yeah, six pin match with a dozen frames to go before it's decided. Come on, kick it up. They're still moving. They're still going around. He'll put eight down with the first ball. That six pin moved a little bit. Fortunately, the wood is frozen. That would normally be very difficult to make because it's so far apart. But as long as he hits the object pin, he should have it. He's got it. Another mark. Another $25 for Mike Morgan. Four marks in a row. And he's on his way to a big string. One forty-four plus a ball through nine. Looking at a one sixty and change. Right in the pocket. Ooh. No luck on that one. He had the arms stretched out as if to say, here comes a strike, and what a surprise. A great hit and a 4-10 split. Well, if he doesn't knock another pin down, he's at 160 right now. Looking for a spare. He's got it! Great shot by Mike Morgan to pick up the spare. Bowler with the high string each week gets an additional $50 bonus from Lita Lanes. Well, he's at 162 plus a ball. And we're looking now at seating position. Regardless of who wins today, it's going to take a big score, probably over 400. And that'll put whoever wins it today in the number one spot of the five bowlers we will have seated by the end of today's show. Mike Morgan, 162, 169. Second string from Mike Morgan, a terrific string by the veteran from Lynn. Two string total of 293. Now Gary Cormier works on a double mark. Puts it right on the head pin. Leaves himself a tough shot though. Puts seven in the spare. Now the wood rolls out. Wood becomes a factor here. It continues to roll out. Squares up now. Not good wood. Look at this. Oh, he sent it over the top of the 10 pin. Wow, what a great try by Gary Cormier. How do you send it over the top of the pin like that? He's at 126. What a great try. Gonna miss the head pin here. Four horsemen on the right side. And the seven pin in the left corner. Tough shot here with that wood frozen. Not gonna make it. Leaves the six pin. Yeah, that's so he's open in the tenth frame, the ninth and tenth. He's at 135. Possible 136. And he goes from having an eight-pin lead at the start of this match to being down by 25. about 25. Could be right. 26, 25. It'll be 25. A 25-pin lead for Mike Morgan, 293 to 268 as we head to the third and final string of this championship match. We come back for the finale on WNDS-TV's Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Lita Lanes right after this. Gary Cormier will be first to bowl in the third string, trailing Mike Morton by 25 pins.
pins. Cormier's first ball. Look at that for a first ball. Right in the pocket, the five pin. Gary Cormier was the WCBC Rookie of the Year a couple years ago, rated number 14 on the WCBC Tour last year. Picks up a spare in the first box. He's terrific at single pin spares. He's really very accurate. Right on. That was a great ball. We'll, we'll see a lot more of this guy. Five pin again, twice in a row. Defied him. Mike Morgan's going to have to pull another rabbit out of the hat here the way that Cormier's starting. That pin's rolling back. Watch out. He missed it. May have, may have just rushed it, although he that has a very fast pace of bowling anyway. Might have jinxed him a little bit, too. Talking about how well he picked up singleton spares. <laughs> Yeah, there's a break for Mike Morgan, who finished with a 169 after a 124. That's likely to win him $50 for the high string of the game. Our winner today gets $1,000 and will be in the Tournament of Champions, probably as the number one seed so far. Mike Morgan off the head pin, but good reverse action as the pins come from behind. The one, the six, and the ten. You can either take this from the outside or the inside, going between the one and the six. He went the inside route and missed it. Picks up a 10 box. Tom Grant from Manchester sent us an email addressed to me. I've seen you at some of the Manchester Monarchs games. What do you do there, he asks. <laughs> You're right winger, aren't you? <laughs> well, I do some work on cable for the station that covers the Manchester Monarchs games, working with Brad Park and Fred Cusick, and we have a lot of fun doing that. I watch you and Mike when I can, when I'm not working weekends at the JFK in Manchester. My question is, have they ever considered having men's, a men's doubles tournament? I don't ever recall seeing one. I don't think that's in the drawing board stages at this point. It would be enjoyable. Doubles events, both mixed and uh, same sex, is very popular, especially in bowling tournaments in that format. Michael Oops. missed the spare. He had an opportunity. Single pin spare. Both bowlers now guilty of missing single pin spares. A 25 pin lead Mike had coming into this game now has just been cut nearly in half, depending on the fill here from Gary. Look at this mess. The one, the six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And he's got five pieces of wood on the deck. Only one pin into the pit. No, he missed the head pin, which was key. All right, come on, the ten. He's picked up nine of the 25, so it's a 16 pin lead now for Mike Morgan. Open in the third. Gary Corm needs to put a couple of marks on the board. It's a good way to do it. He threw a pretty good first ball. Will they go? Still wiggling. The five pin wiggles and wiggles. You don't want to jinx it, but you can't miss this one, can you? No, I don't think so. No. That's a spare for Gary Cormier in the fourth. Got to call on my part, huh? <laughs> you really went out on a limb on that I one. sure did. Yeah. We talk about the internet, CandlepinCorner.com, that his cousin Kevin Cormier runs. Gary's hobby is spending time on the internet. There's so much to see and explore out there. It really, I think it's the addiction of the, uh, of the new millennium because you just get on there and you don't want to get off sometimes. So many interesting things to see. Mike Morgan with a strike. That took about no time flat for it to get all the pins down on that one. Right in the pocket. Mike Morgan moves over to lane 33. The Morgans, Mike and brother Tom, have bowled against one another several times on our show in the past, and they could be match up, matched up in the Tournament of Champions if Mike continues his lead. But that's a very dubious lead at this point. That one got away from him. He was off the head pin. But he's working on a strike, so he's got another ball to fill the strike. And he'll put six in the strike. 
And he's up against now a Gary Cormier mark. So Gary has a chance to gain some ground. It's going to be a seven box for Mike. We're going to go to the break. And we have 20 pins separating these two. Actually less than 20 because Gary Cormier has a ball to fill the spare. So it'll tighten up when we come back to Lita Lanes in Nashua for the finale of this match on WNDS-TV's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Gary Cormier will will be first to bowl as we welcome you back to Lita Lanes in Nashville, New Hampshire, Dick Lutz with Mike Morin. Terrific match for the championship of this ladder series. Gary Cormier, who made his television debut a winning one last week, defeating veteran Steve Vadney with a 409 triple up against veteran Mike Morgan this week. It'll be a 400 triple to win this match too, in all likelihood. So 63 half for Gary Cormier, whose two games have been very consistent today, 132 and 136. Gary missed the head pin there, but takes it out from behind, leaving himself the gift of the 710 with some wood on the deck. Well, I guess you play the wood in the middle. Yep. Hope the ball deflects over to the 7 pin. Hope something happens. There it goes! It came back to take it. The ball came back to take it. The ball deflected off the back wall, off the roof, and came down and took out the seven pin. That gets the crowd charged up, and Mike Morgan now needs to press on to maintain his very slim lead. Mike responds with a good first ball. Uh, leaves just the seven pin. That pin's going to roll all the way over to the corner, and Mike's going to give it time to roll over to the corner. As long as it goes all the way over and not in, not just out in front. It may have Is it going to lean on the, the pin? Gutter. Nope, it's not going to yep. lean on the pin. I thought it might lean up against it, but it doesn't. From 65 to 70 feet away sometimes, you can't really tell. Mike missed the spare. Kind of skip lobbed it. Not a real smooth release. The ball never broke to the right. And that'll be a 10 box. So now he's up against.